Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is for you, I'm Cyclone. It's time for more Let's Play Train Simulator Classic. We're going to continue using the SD75 today, but we're going to use the SD75M. We already played with the SD75I, so now it's just moving down to the M, which seems to have the same picture, interestingly enough. Um, couldn't get two different pictures of the same train, I guess, but uh, yeah. Anyway, we are looking at a 25-minute scenario called Climbing Sullivan's Curve. Happy weekend to you once again. Uh, hopefully, you're having a good weekend. Uh, or about to have a good weekend, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep you company with some train driving here. So, I uh, climbing solve this curve. We are obviously going to be the only thing I can tell you for sure about this journey is we're going to be going into, through, and out of Sullivan's Curve. Where exactly it starts, I don't know. Where exactly it ends, I don't know. We're not going to make it all the way to Barstow if this is indeed a 25 minute scenario because it's at least an hour to get there, at least from uh, Sullivan's Curve to Barstow. So, uh, this is probably just a very short scenario introducing Sullivan's Curve, which you've already seen in the main pack, but who cares? We're going to go ahead and see it again. So let's go ahead and take a look at Sullivan's Curve once again. Good evening, driver. You are making the ascent up the Cajun Pass in triple-headed ST-75 Amnes to Barstow, where your mixed freight will be delivered and sorted. One of the first curves on the ascent is called Sullivan's Curve and is renowned, a renowned point for rail fans. Roger. You can proceed as soon as signals allow, which is right now. If there's a crowd at the curve, why not give them a show and sound your horn as you near mile post 63? Roger. We have a blinking yellow. We are good to go. Bring that up, and let's see if we can give anyone a show here. Where are we starting on the route today? First of all, we need speed. Where are we starting on the route today? Seems we're starting up around Sullivan's Curve. We seem to be right there. Yeah, we are right around Sullivan's Curve. This is the area known as Sullivan's Curve right here. So uh, we're going to be making our way along here. And we're going to be eventually going via the summit. And that is that. We're not really doing much here. Yeah, that's it. interesting that scenario says if there is a crowd around the curve you know that the designer of the scenario plopped a crowd around the curve I guarantee you there's a crowd there I absolutely guarantee you there's a crowd up there so we had a flashing light which means we're gonna be changing lanes I guess or going at a certain speed I don't remember exactly what that one means but in any case we are not it's not a not a clear green at line speed type situation at all that looks like a rock up ahead. Yeah, it is a rock up ahead. Ah, uh, we are under no timetable, by the way. So mile post 63 is about three miles away. So you can see we are climbing a 1.8% gradient, very, very steep gradient here. And you may have also noticed when I looked at the information earlier, it said the last task is a go via. It's a go via task. So we're going to be ending our journey 10 miles away from here. We're not stopping. We're just going to keep right on going. And we're going to be put into an emergency brake to finish the scenario. That, you can pause to see who it was. I never did say last year I liked how this train operates in terms of its throttle and its coasting ability, but looks like I'm going to be getting to see that at play again here. Thankfully, this is not a career scenario, so we are perfectly fine the way we are. And theoretically, we could also speed if we wanted to.
We seem to be holding a 34.1, which is good news. I do expect there's a 30 coming up later. So we're going to have to drop our speed on this 2.2% uphill gradient. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and leave it as it is. Right now, there's a 45 coming up, in fact. So the 45 is sufficient for our purpose. Ooh, bit of a bump there. You see, by the way, the uh, highway over here on the side. So let's go ahead and pop over and just take a quick look. I believe this is the interstate, excuse me. Yep, this is the interstate over here, I believe. So you can see the uh, train going by from the interstate over here. Look at that. Look at the clouds in the sky as well. Back in the cab. So we have a red over green, we're changing lanes, which means we probably have to go down to 30 for this. Nope, we're still 35 here, so I'll take it back up. It doesn't hurt to be careful. Hmm, excuse me. So there appears to be some cars here on the uh, other track here. I'm not sure what this other train is. Just blocking the way here. Just some random cars placed in the middle of the path. I don't know why they're there. Because any train coming along is not going to be able to uh, go through that. So I don't know why they're there. Coming up on the magical mile post number 63. So we're going to take a look outside and see what the crowd is like out here on the uh, hill. Hmm, I don't see anyone. But if there is, it would be right here. We do have a green, as you can see. Quite a few people have gathered. The eager rail fans have their cameras ready, filming the train as you ascend the pass. I don't see anyone. Oh, here they are. There we go. Game of show. Just a few. That's not a lot. That's just a few people. So getting back up to speed now. Maybe. 2.2 .2 is doing a number on me. There are bound to be several other groups on the way up the pass. Keep an eye out for them on the way to the summit where the scenario will end. Roger. I'm going to keep my speed right where it is for now. I might have to drop the uh, throttle again to keep under 35. And surely the 30 is coming up as well. Okay. 
Oh, that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> that would, that's the Union Pacific track. So let's just take a pop over here for a second. You can see that this is indeed a Union Pacific train going along here. So this is the UP track. This is uh, the track that they exclusively use. The only reason that BNSF would ever use that track is if they had to make a run up to Palmdale. And usually, I guess, permission would be granted. Something along those lines. Because they don't have the line up to Palmdale. But they have another own path around to Mojave. So they don't have to necessarily go through Palmdale. Here's the 30 coming along, so I need to lower my throttle. Bye. Going one notch at a time ensures that you're not that you're gonna have the least disruption possible with your um, cars clanging into you or pulling you back, as the case may be. So now that I'm getting below 30, I'm going to go ahead and test by going up to level 3 throttle one more time. And I'm getting a lot of speed right now, so I'm going to pull it back for a moment. Let's go ahead and push it back up now. Thirty is now our speed limit. I seem to have hit the perfect spot right now for holding, but I seem to be losing speed again on this 2.2. So I will keep an eye on that as we progress. And now I'm gaining speed again. Too much speed, so I'm going to lower it down again. Looks like I'm going to have to do this all the way up, unfortunately for me. Unless I can uh, center in on about a 28 here, in which case I will just accept that. 2.1% gradient, 29.1 miles per hour at this time. And as I say on the radio, we're going to take it through the TMT or whatever it is. We're down to 27, which is not... It's getting towards the point that I'm going to have to put the throttle back on. So we are definitely in a bit of a uh, difficult spot for speed maintenance right now. Let's put it back up. We're holding at 28.4 at the moment, and we are slowly gaining speed. So you can see I've lowered my throttle back down to level two. We're gonna lose a little bit of speed again. All we can do, unfortunately. I mean, I could play with the brakes and try to maintain the speed, but this is such a sharp climb that that would be a very difficult task to uh, accomplish indeed. So we're gonna just go ahead and go back and forth, take the occasional bump from the train. It's all we can do. You may have heard a noise a moment ago as well. My iPad came to life for a moment, so I've I picked that up and basically uh, turned it on so it doesn't make noises while I'm using it. Bye. 
Now, I have not noticed any more groups of rail fans yet, so I'm a little curious of where the other groups are located. Can I put a little speed back on? That's down. Up. Up. Thank you. They're coming up on the first of two tunnels. These tunnels no longer exist. I believe they blasted the rock out here or they built the track around. I'm not sure which. Are my headlights on? I assume they are. Now, I would be surprised if there are no rail fans hanging out between these tunnels. This is where they should be hanging out. Right in this area is exactly where I would expect them to hang out. But no one's here. As they come upon the other tunnel. And as usual, we have a barrier of sand to deal with here. Ah, always fun. You come out of the sand too. I mean, you have to... It shouldn't be doing this. This is not right, but it kind of does have some kind of weird storyline element to it, doesn't it? They have emerged from the sands of time. The train continues its journey. Back in the cab. <coughs> Excuse me. So apparently we're about seven minutes away from our final uh, waypoint here. We have another Union Pacific train, it looks like, over on the other side of us here. There he goes. Union Pacific line is busy today. That line is occupied. And there's no uh, nothing on the track to um, for us. Like, I don't see... <coughs> excuse me. I don't see any signals or anything on that line. The signals are all on our track, so... For our purposes, that track is unusable. It's only being used to uh, have... Hello. That's what I get for looking away for a moment. It's only being used to show Union Pacific traffic, and that's it. There's no signals on the line. We can't use that line really at all. So we are not uh, designated to use that. And the fact that the uh, Union Pacific trains are both on that track, that can be a dangerous element if uh, either of them decides to come to a stop. Because the signals have not been simulated. There is a 40 coming up. Um. 
So this is the point in the track at which the Union Pacific's going to curve with us to the south. We have a flashing yellow. That means there is a line change coming up. But we are also two miles away from that point where the line change takes place. Yellow over yellow would indicate that we're stopping. Yellow over, a flashing yellow over red probably just means the line changed like it did before. Now looking up at the point that we have to go to, we're gonna be going to Summit Track 2, which is still right there. So we're gonna be passing another train on our way to Summit Track 2. You did see, by the way, the blue line was lit up, so the path is set for us. No, no uh, obstacles, no uh, problems. We're going to cross Summit Track 2 without any issue at all. If we head over here, you can see the other track, which nowadays is track number 3. It's crossing the Sturt Road just like ours is. So there's one of your screenshots right there for the day. Back to the cab. So I'm starting to speed up again, hoping that I don't cross the, uh, that I finish crossing the 40s so I can speed up further. I am hopeful of that. Looks like I'm going to be successful in that mission. Actually, barely. It started really shooting up there. So I'm barely active in that, or correct in that. So 40 is now our speed limit for another uh, mile or so, because by the time we actually finish uh, getting past this 45 signal, our snare is going to end. So it's going to be 40 for almost the next full mile, and we're done. Cutting the throttle down because we're now at the point where we need to watch our speed. I should also point out that we're now on a very level ground. So we actually need to cut the throttle completely for a moment. And we're trying to maintain just a single level of throttle. And we might actually get some time at this 45. Not much. The signal is in our favor for a lane change. You can see up ahead. Gonna keep it out for you just in case the speed limit drops at the curve. It could be a 30, but we'll deal with it if it's a 30. Nope, staying 45. There we go. And this is gonna be the end of the scenario right here. Why not, right? Prepare for the emergency break as the scenario ends. I want to say make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, next time we're going to do the next scenario in this set as the emergency break's triggered. So I'm going to say have a wonderful day, evening, night, whatever you're part of the world. I'll see you for the next scenario here on Cahoon Pass, which will start in 3, 2, 1.